Integrated Photonics has already been developed for a number of conventional applications, but to develop it for quantum applications requires a number of significant new innovations. These systems need to be packaged into modules and subsystems with optical fibres, and very often they will need to work at very low temperatures, so very close to absolute zero, so that we can preserve um, the quantum properties and uh, protect them against the external environment. So this requires a whole new generation of cryogenic or low temperature integrated photonic technology. Silicon technology that's in logic devices that are in your smartphone at the moment has taken 60 years to get from emergence to where we are today. Now quantum is almost at the early stages that silicon technology was at uh, 60 years ago. To develop quantum technologies, we need to have ways to fabricate the components for um, quantum networks, like light sources. And the requirements for the light sources are very simple. They need to be perfect. So what we need to do is to create a nanometric scale object that is absolutely symmetrical and ideally clean without any imperfections of, or unwanted defects. And if you want to make it into technology, not a laboratory demonstrator, it needs to be done in a scalable, reproducible, controllable way. My part of the job in Tyndall, in terms of development of the quantum technology, is to provide, uh, provide the material that can be later taken farther by the characterization and processing people who can turn it into an element of quantum network. Today we use quantum mechanics calculations to understand and predict the chemical and physical properties of materials for engineering, energy and health. We can simulate thousands of atoms and this takes quite a long time, from hours to even months. With a quantum simulator, we could run much larger systems in a much shorter time. Quantum simulators would accelerate the discovery of materials and expand the types of systems that we can simulate and this is really exciting. A quantum dot is a tiny piece of semiconductor which in our case can emit uh, small portions of light and that light is a resource for quantum communication, quantum computations. To have a realistic uh, quantum computer we will have to have uh, go way beyond at the stage where we are now. So we have to go to thousands, millions, probably those qubits. To achieve these results, we will require a team with uh, multiple expertise, like in Tyndall, from materials to theory um, to characterization. Quantum technology has been pioneered to a large extent with a focus on uh, science, uh, quantum, and rightly so, and that will continue. But as we are now starting to see the potential of the technology, it's very important now to bring together uh, you know, highly multidisciplinary groups of researchers focusing on how to make the materials, how to integrate different materials together to build new types of quantum system. And there are not many research centres around the world that have all those pieces together under one roof. And we do here at Tyndall.